pump. Hello, fellow gamers. So, I recently got back into retro games and uh, went online to try to find a cheap handheld. Look on AliExpress, and there it is. $12 cool, baby. So, there's a lot of different variations. I've seen it go anywhere from $15 to $50. It just depends on who's selling it and what name they've slapped on it. But it's pretty much the same thing on the inside, which is what we're going to find out today. This model has a 4 gigabyte TFT card and comes preloaded with something like a thousand games or something on there, but everything's in Chinese. So one of the first things you're going to have to do is go change the setting. Luckily the symbols are pretty much the same, so go to the gear, once it lets you, open it up. There's only four settings in the base opening menu, so just go down to the third one and change it over to English, and there you go. Unfortunately, there are no other language settings in this device. I see these things floating around all the time, and I was just curious if there was any kind of firmware updates I could do to it, or what kind of customization options are available. It's amazing to me, a person who grew up through the era of NES, SNES, and all of that, that um, this kind of hardware is available so cheap and so universally now. I mean, most gamers are going to probably think this thing is junk for the most part, especially with modern standards, but you got to remember, this kind of computing power wasn't even available when these systems were out. I mean, this thing's got over 10 times, in some cases over 100 times, the computing power that the uh, systems it's emulating had. While it might not live up to modern gaming standards, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I don't know why, I just think this is great. Most of the components in this were repurposed from other things, like Motorola phones, often Nokia batteries. The screens are pretty decent, although one thing I will caution on is that they uh, have it set to the maximum brightness to you know, make it look the best when you turn it on. That will definitely kill the battery pretty quick because it's a very short-lived battery. Out of all the uh, potential $2 to $20 models that are out there, the reason I was attracted to this one was pretty simple. Uh, I just wanted to change the ROMs to my own personal ROMs. So if you're going to go after one of those ones that has a controller and you know plugs into the TV, looks like a Game Boy original form fact, uh, factor, it's, it's gonna be a fixed ROM, flash ROM, on the actual board and you won't be able to access it with anything you try to do. I've, I've got them, I've torn them down, and they're utterly inaccessible. So if the model that you're looking for is the cheapest possible and you want to be able to play your favorite games, you're definitely going to look for something with a TFT card uh, slot in it. Sometimes they'll have two, sometimes they'll just have the one. They always come with the absolute cheapest um, micro SD card that you can have. These things crash all the time, even in just making this video and you know, going through and putting ROMs on, uh, I had some problems with it, so you're probably going to want to replace that almost immediately. Now, that being said, back up the firmware. There's nowhere online for you to find it, and if you brick this thing, there's really zero support available, as most people don't even really know who manufactures the, you know, the product itself. Here you can see we've identified the processor. It's not a horrible processor, but it's also not a great processor. I mean, uh, as far as comparisons go to the hardware that it's emulating, it's actually top-notch, um, way ahead of all of the things that it proposes it can handle. Um, the problem is that the emulators are fixed on the actual ROM, so uh, or on the, the, the ROM itself for the device. So um, you can't get a better emulator if the emulator doesn't work well with somebody's ROM or with some variation of a ROM, there's nothing you can do about that. Which, that's a huge bummer. But at the same token, most of these games are gonna be pretty simple and most of them are gonna have no problems whatsoever. As for the emulator formats, um, you can't use any zipped files. You're gonna have to use, you know, the raw GBA NES files. Um, and that's all that the emulator will be able to read. It says that it does MAME. What it means is that it does, uh, as far as I can tell anyway, the Neo Geo Pocket, which uh, is uh, FBA files. Um, 
And uh, so if you have like a large main collection, don't expect to be able to just dump those in here and play. And aside from that, the audio is um, okay. It's okay on basic games and stuff, but games that try to really put a lot of effort into their audio are going to crackle. It's not going to sound great. Um, that being said, I'd love to display it and show you guys, but you know how the copyright restrictions work. So I'm just going to do a quick demo here of some of the games and some of the systems. But uh, I have to keep the audio cut out because, you know, algorithms and all that jazz. Well, I'm not very good at these games. Uh, it's one thing you should know for sure. But uh, on top of that, filming in front of the camera, it was kind of hard to hold. Uh, this thing is not the most comfortable in the first place. The form's pretty good, but the buttons aren't exactly uh, you know, conducive to multiple different hand positions. So uh, I, I suck, and I'm not doing well because the camera's in front of me here. But that being said, the game's played pretty well. I, I put F-Zero right up front because I always test emulators with that. The only thing that I noticed in F-Zero that was a problem was some crackling in the audio, and that's SNES original F-Zero. But when I played the Game Boy Advanced version of F-Zero, which is a much higher graphic rate and you know much more complex file, much larger file, it had no problem. It played it without any skips, and the audio sounded really good. So again, it, it, it comes down to performance based on the emulator and on, on the ROM itself. A lot of people are going to just immediately get this thing out of the box, throw their favorite uh, you know, games on it, and expect it to put out really high performance. But it's not going to do that. It's, it's going to be able to play the things it advertises, you know, the, uh, the, the NES, SNES, the Genesis, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advanced, and uh, the Neo Geo Pocket. Those games are going to play on it completely playable. Um, you got to remember, back in the day, we were dealing with like 15 frames a second. So all these people these days that are, you know, complaining that they're not getting a full 60 frames per second on a $20 handheld might not, you know, fully grasp the concept of how cool it is. Um, and that being said, the hardware today makes it way easy to find stuff that can play it better. If you are really interested in emulating games, then I actually, pff, I'm going to give you the same recommendation everybody gives you, and that's do it on your phone, because the emulators out there are amazing, the community is really amazing, the games, uh, they look so much better with the, the shaders you can get and stuff for it. This will not do any of that. However, there's a bit of charm in this as well. The concept that it's fixed kind of works for me, especially in video games. I, I don't know why, but when I have more control and more options often in video games I find myself you know it's harder for me to build up interest in it you know it's it's like which one am I gonna pick I, I kinda go with the analysis paralysis I freeze like what game am I gonna go with uh, I've got 8 billion games what settings are me you know and I'll spend four hours customizing a thing instead of actually like playing on it Whereas when I got this little thing, um, well, mainly because I was testing it, you know, I immediately threw my games that I wanted to play on there, and I started playing it right away. And because I was playing it right away at maximum brightness, you know, I got about 45 minutes before the out-of-box battery charge died, and I had to uh, put, you know, put it on the charger. So it's it, it's nothing uh, to write home about, but it's uh, there's no information I could find on it anywhere. There was no good uh, reputable sources on the model or the make, and. I had not seen any teardowns of the internal components, so I just wanted to make sure that was available. Uh, if anybody, you know, if anybody's looking for this information, here it is. It's a ATS 3603 processor, but you've already got all that information from the graphics. I, I think it's pretty cool that it can run all these emulators, and I was happy that um, it could run them pretty well. And the screen is not bad. You saw the viewing angles; it's not bad considering, um, you know, what, what we're paying for here. Well, anyway, if you didn't know, now you know. Thanks for watching.